show. We got a great show tonight. Right, Judge, huh? Terrific. Yeah, just checking to see if you're still here. All right. That's <laughs> <laughs> the judge. Yeah. All right, so here we go again. The Twitter spokesman confirms that Elon Musk has offered to buy the company again at his original price of $44 billion. Apparently, Twitter threw in a set of nonstick pans, and that sealed the deal. <laughs> and, of course, the media once again pulling out what's left of their hair. Cue the montage, Sal. I hesitate to even ask what could Elon Musk be thinking. That's a recipe for disaster. He wants to remove some of the guardrails around free speech. What does that mean for misinformation? I don't know. I mean, more mm -hmm. open to a free speech? I think that's pretty much a haven for Yeah, I know. It's kind speech. of a hot mess, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, he riffs. He changes his mind. Sometimes he trolls, I think. So I, I don't <laughs> know. I don't know how he is going to run this company. Have you ever been to a wedding where you're like there and you're like, Ooh, they really shouldn't be getting married. You know, yeah. this is not going to work out. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon in your future. <laughs> Was that mean? Yes. Good. Now, before Musk could try to back out of the deal, claiming Twitter was not forthright about the number of spam accounts on the site, especially fake ones like Everyone Loves Brian Kilmeade 2019. <laughs> Come on. Both sides were due in court in a few weeks to hash this out, but now Musk can own the company in days. So what if Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter upsets you? What does that say about you? Well, it means you're probably in the media and you're probably a Democrat. Or either that, you're just jealous he had $44 billion to spend. That's at least double what I have. <laughs> so why is he a threat to the media? Well, it means that they'll waste even more time online than they already do because those bots full of DNC talking points aren't going to forward themselves. And unlike the media, Musk isn't moving in the direction of limiting speech, but increasing it. And why should that be scary? Does the media have a word allergy? Seriously, unless you're Kamala Harris, isn't more speech a good thing? <laughs> See, we do clap for her. <laughs> Very positive, balanced show. <laughs> but my guess is the only people upset about Musk are those who see their gravy train of lies about to end. They're like kids who had free reign of the house while the parents were away, and now the parents are coming home, so they'll spend the next week cleaning up the mess you and your friends made, and you'll probably have to rent one of those giant vacuums from the supermarket because <laughs> Cat Tim barfed in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> Did I wake you? Anyway. I'm freezing. Okay, good. The media knows what they could lose with Musk. It's the freedom to amplify biased narratives to help their political allies, while also suffocating stories that might bolster your point of view. We saw this with Russian collusion, the assorted race hoaxes, Jan 6, and of course, Hunter Biden. They feared that their nonsense might get drowned out by more nonsense or worse, actual truth. They must feel the same way my competition did when I showed up on the late night scene to drown out their left-leaning stale garbage. Oh, stop. Stop. That was so gratuitous. Shoehorning that in. But if Twitter is truly the country's town square, then Elon buying Twitter is saving the country. As it stands now, Twitter repurposes information into bite-sized talking points for journalists who forgot how to think for themselves. They're the drug supplier who's cutting the product with fentanyl, then supplying it to the masses through low-level street dealers. So Twitter exposes what we know to be true, but rarely admit. And it's not just our strange obsession with Larry Kudlow's socks. It's worse. It's that our opinions come from somewhere else, off an assembly line like brand new Nikes, except they're made by the left and their allies, not child laborers, who would do a much better job, let's be honest. If you're a reporter at CNN, which already shows poor judgment, and you can't figure out where to stand on something, Twitter makes it easy. It's the same way McDonald's makes it easy when you can't decide what to eat. Sure, it's not the healthiest for you, but you know what you're getting and you didn't have to cook. So opinions are pre-made, no thought necessary. If you talk a lot about crime, then Twitter will say such talk is racist. If you criticize our border policy, our open borders, well, then that's xenophobia. 
If you talk about COVID too much, well, then that's just misinformation. If you talk about your kids' education sucking, well, then you're a domestic terrorist. If you question gender affirmation surgery, well, clearly you want trans kids to die. You see, this town square is more like a black hole where truth goes to die, to be replaced by propaganda. It's less a conversation than it is a controlling mechanism against dissent. It is a town square in that it's just like Tiananmen Square, and Musk is the dude standing in front of the tank. Fact is, Elon is simply trying to fix Twitter so we can all participate as opposed to being shamed or silenced. I get plenty of that when I post bikini pics on Instagram. <laughs> No filter either. <laughs> but here's the really huge truth. Elon owning Twitter is big because Twitter already owns the media. So Musk buying Twitter means he just bought them too. Talk about truly owning the libs. Lefties unravel when she bangs her gavel. That sounded dirty. Co-host of the five, Judge Jadine Pirro.